Welcome to Leadership is Essential. This panel will focus on leadership and self-discovery. In order to be a great leader, you first have to know who you are. You must know your strengths, your weaknesses, and vulnerabilities before working with others. We all know that leaders must have courage, honesty, integrity, openness, fairness, and transparency. But leadership is definitely a process by which the leader is working with other people to move an agenda or a mission of an organization forward. I have brought together some amazing women to talk about their experiences, leading organizations, and to discuss their path towards self-discovery. The truth is, most leaders don't think they are leaders. They see a problem and they mobilize others to action. Let's find out the kernels of wisdom from our panelists. The leadership and self-discovery panel includes Mary Dean, President, Kansas Justice Advocates Incorporated. And she is also the president of Black Women Empowered in Wichita Incorporated. Teresa Rupp, President and CEO, Child Start. Priska Barnes, President and CEO, Storytime Village. My first question to the panelists will begin with Mary Dean. What led you to your organization? Uh, when I first started uh, Kansas Justice Advocate, Inc., it was because I seen a need mm -hmm. um, in the communities of people that I was advocating for, even before I even started think about uh, uh, creating an organization. I was with the NAACP, and uh, the people that we were advocating for came in with all kind of issues that was really concerning, you know, dealing with discrimination, dealing with foster care, uh, dealing with housing. So uh, eventually I felt a need that I needed to step out there on my own. And so in 1996, I created uh, Kansas Justice Advocate, Inc., where I deal with the issues uh, concerning discrimination in all areas. Uh, with Black Women Empowered in Wichita, Inc., we, we uh, Shirley Benton Kelly and myself, we talked about this for a long time, about the issues dealing with black women, uh, the things that we, have, you know, we go through, uh, how we are looked at as the be all and, and end all of everything, of everybody, but we fail to take care of ourselves. So we, uh, set up an appointment and we met with Dr. Rhonda K. Lewis uh, sitting here with us and we wanted to know how we could uh, create something that would focus on the needs of young black women uh, ages 14 and up spiritually, mentally, and physically. And so in 2012, we uh, created Black Women Empowered in Wichita and in 2015, we received our 501c3. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. Others want to talk about what led you to lead your organization. <clears throat> Gee, what led me to lead Child Start was that I was looking for a job. And I had um, a background in family and child development and in public administration. And here was this job that was about children and families and about running the organization. And I thought, okay, this is my job. If they'll just hire me, this is my job. Um, and what, what made it, what I wanted to do was that I could see that the work that my organization would do would really make a difference for people's lives. We could make a difference for, for families in Wichita. And I'd be able to see that a difference was made. And you thought you had the skills to do that. And so what were those skills that you felt like, or the leadership qualities that you thought you had to do that? Well, I thought I could learn anything I needed to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I would, uh, I thought I had enough background in family development that I would understand what was going on with teachers and in classrooms. Um, I had taken some budgeting <laughs> courses. I felt like I 
had done enough um, work with groups and committees in other kinds of um, ways that I could figure out a way to work with a board of directors and with other groups in the community. But that sounds I, like know, a lot. That's scary. That sounds overwhelming. A board of directors and teachers. Well, you know, I, I lost sleep for the first three years. I mean, I would be so nervous the day before board meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would just be crazy because mm -hmm. I felt like I had to really have it together. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I think the role But it, it got easier. It yeah. got easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just had, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes when you're a leader, you have to just really, um, you know, pull yourself together yeah. and stand up straight yeah. and be prepared. I mean, I really think mm -hmm. that if you are in a position where people are looking at you to lead, the best thing you can do is work hard and get prepared. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a really and, good quality. And you don't think of it as, I need to be prepared to be a leader. You think of it as, we have this meeting and we have this and this and this to do and I need to know mm -hmm. as much about this and get as much information together to help people make a decision mm -hmm. and then let them make the decision. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to know everything. Mm -hmm. just facilitate. You just facilitate. And be prepared to do your homework. Right. That's good. That's mm -hmm. a good skill. That's a good skill set. Mm -hmm. Ms. Barnes. Um, the journey with Storytime Village uh, began um, in 2005. And uh, that's when my, my brother Jesse and I uh, published uh, a children's book. And um, we thought that was, you know, something that we'd, we wanted to do and uh, check that off of our bucket list. Um, but um, after doing book signings and things of that nature, um, I wanted to do more. I had a desire to do more. And, and um, I was listening to, uh, it was a, a guy who was a former uh, executive of a Fortune 500 company. And um, he had been backpacking in and, uh, and, and a third world country. and. Um, discovered uh, a community without books and um, started to bring um, uh, books to them um, and then ultimately began to build libraries and then began to um, he had his own publishing company and I said oh wow here you are with this little book and what else are you doing to contribute to the world and so um, in 2009 is when Storytime Village was born um, with the mission to inspire a lifelong love of reading for underserved Kansas children from birth to age eight. And we uh, focused on the birth to age eight because we understand um, that um, if you don't have that basic fundamental of reading by the end of third grade, then what are your chances of having a successful future um, uh, in adulthood? Um, so um, it is a passion and um, we, that the, the, the the thought of, of a village, uh, knowing that it takes a village to raise a child, mm -hmm. um, and uh, partnering, you know, that village, it, it, the people in our community and working with, with others uh, to really accomplish a goal. Um, that has been um, rewarding and challenging, mm -hmm. and, um, but to, to know that we are uh, doing our part in changing um, the lives of the youngest in our community, um, those that are going to be the leaders of our community in the future. Um, uh, that's what wakes me up, gets me up every morning. That's what helps me to, to keep pushing. Um, and so um, that's just a little bit about, uh, about the journey of Storytime Village. Well, when you talk about change, what does it take to get people to change? Because I think in every one of your organizations, it takes you as a leader to get people to do that. So how do you take your leadership skills and qualities to do that? I think you have to show people that you're you're persistent, consistent, and committed to doing uh, what you say you're all about. Yeah. If you're out there advocating for justice, you have to be consistent. You have to let the people see you be in boots on the ground uh, uh, with that. Uh, if you're saying you're advocating for women who are having issues when it uh, comes to uh, sexual abuse, uh, drugs, or anything that's affecting them mentally, physically, and spiritually, you have to have gone through that journey also. Because you cannot speak on something if you haven't gone through it yourself. And so you have to, be, have to show people 
you know, who you really are by what you're doing yourself. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think you have that, that stick to itness. You have to, it, sometimes it looks like um, things may not be going the best, you know, they might not be going the way you want them to do at that very time, that, uh, at that moment. But if you um, don't give up, if you uh, stick to it, then you will reap the benefits mm -hmm. that you're seeking. Um, but a lot of times people give up just short of mm -hmm. of their uh, of reaping you know uh, the goal and um, if you stick to it um, mm -hmm. I think that y you'll see uh, that, that um, you'll accomplish what you were mm -hmm. setting out to do Very good. Good. how do you get people to come with you I I learned this over a long time yeah. but I really feel like one of the things that's most important is to listen to people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of my skills. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can cultivate it. Mm. You know, everybody isn't, isn't necessarily born a great listener. <laughs> Plenty of us are not born great listeners. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I think that's really important. I don't, I don't think that you can... Um, if you, if you work with a group of people, everybody doesn't have the same thing in mind. Right. And it's useful, it's really useful to find out what they do have in mind mm -hmm. and where they have things in common and how you can go forward. Because if nobody's following you, you are not a leader. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is you so know? true. You, yeah. And, and you've, you've got to kind of figure out you may know what you want to do, but you still have to figure out mm -hmm. how to get it done. Mm -hmm. And part of that is involving other people in helping to get it done, to kind of galvanize people to move forward, don't you think? Mm -hmm. You know, I found out the hard way when um, I was working at Bowen and doing some of the things I was doing that I really literally turned people off because oh. it was my way. And, and mm -hmm. even though, as Teresa said, people have different opinions, uh, they don't actually see things the way you do. And like my daughter tells me all the time, uh, everybody, don't, everybody don't think like Mary Dean. And so it took me a long time to figure out how to be more diplomatic in what I did in trying to listen to people and for people to receive me. Because I know that I had a reputation as a, as a person that you know, wasn't very open to other people's ideas. And it took me a long time. Uh, I had to sit back and really analyze me. And I asked for God's help and leadership in helping me figure this out. And it did, I did. And thank God for that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you cannot be a true leader if you're not willing to listen to other people's opinions and maybe factor in what they're uh, thinking and would like to do to yeah. incorporate uh, yeah. it, it into what you're doing. Yeah. So it takes that to be a really true leader. Right. Yeah, I'm so glad you're bringing up listening because it keeps coming up as one of those qualities that's really important to be a leader. And I, we keep saying it, but you said it took a long time for you to really incorporate that or, or, or learn that to be a skill for you. What, what was that about? How did you learn to really do that because I think that really is a skill. <laughs> well, I made mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we can learn from our mistakes. Right. You can learn from your mistakes, right. you know, and I, when you have the title, you mm -hmm. know, when you're the boss, then there are some assumptions that come with that. And, and sometimes when you are the, a young leader, you feel like every problem that comes along, it's your responsibility to solve it. And so you jump in and try to solve everything. And that, uh, that's a trap. I mean, you can just work yourself to death yes. doing that kind of mm. thing. And part of what you have to do, or part of what I learned to do by, by making mistakes, I think, was I would jump in and try to solve things. And I finally got so that I would sit back and listen and ask more questions Very good. and ask questions on both sides of an issue or all sides of an issue because it, it, I don't always have the best ideas. All the best ideas do not live in my mm -hmm. office or in my head. Mm -hmm. And 
if I take time to find out more of, of what's going on with other people, what, what do they perceive the problem to be, then we can begin to solve that problem. I mean, I'm not even, part of leadership is, is defining the problem. But part of leadership is inviting other people to help you define the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And figuring out how to go addre about addressing that problem. And you can, you know, if you don't listen to anybody but yourself, you can kind of lead yourself <laughs> down a path that you didn't, you know, find mm -hmm. yourself in a place where you didn't want to be. That's mm -hmm. right. right. And if you're, if you're inviting other people to help you figure out what's the, what's the issue and what needs to be done, then you get more ideas and you get better ideas and everybody kind of has their hands on that and it's better. It is better. Mm -hmm. Come to you a know, better solution. I, I don't, didn't mean to jump, but Prissa said it earlier when she said that you have to uh, work together with, with other people and I'm finding too that as an old guard from, uh, from an ear, uh, we have to learn, us older folks, have to learn how to relinquish some power. Yes. And, and, and pass it on to some of our younger uh, folks that's really t stepping in where we, you know, where we need to step back. What we need to do is to be the role models, mentors, advisors, or whatever. That's what they did with us when we were coming along. Yeah. Uh, we didn't step on the toes of our elders when they were trying to direct us to what we need to be. But our elders, we older folks, we need to understand that the younger generation is it's like somebody had posted on Facebook, and I'm a Facebook nut. I'm sorry, y'all. but. Uh, Someone on Facebook said, this is not your grandma's civil rights movement. Oh, my goodness. And I'm saying, oh, wow. You know, that's right. This is different. Yes. Uh, and I'm proud of the young people that are stepping out. I'm especially proud of Wichita mm -hmm. and the leadership role that they have taken mm -hmm. across the country, showing the model of what a movement and how you can come together as a people, be you white, black, pink, purple, old, young, officer, pat, parishioner, you know, you can come together That's right. and, and do the right thing because we're all here, uh, as James R. Bertha says all the time, we might not have came over here in the same ship, but we all in the same boat. Yeah. And that's what we need to realize. Mm -hmm. And so as an older person, I can't walk anymore. I can drive. I can support you in other ways, but I cannot do the things that I used to do. So I'm, you know, I'm just proud and I'm honored that these young people are stepping up and doing what they uh, should be doing and we should not be criticizing, we should be supporting them in every kind of way that we can. And, and cultivating them. And cultivating them, right. Now, Prisca, did you want to comment? Well, uh, just to, to add, add on just to what um, Mary Dean was just um, was talking about, uh, uh, the mentors and, and those that are, are um, helping a younger um, uh, generation to come to come up. Um, I think it takes both. Uh, a lot of times, uh, I'm, I'm moving out of the the younger generation. <laughs> I'm I'm still a part of the young professional group, but I'm I'm slowly moving out of. It. Uh, <laughs> but but it but. What I've learned is, um, you know, in talking with my peers, um, sometimes um, you get really excited um, about um, wanting to take on the reins of leadership. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to understand that it doesn't, it, it, you know, you do need the mentorship. Yes. And you do need the guidance of those who have mm -hmm. been in those roles. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we think, um, that this is something new, but there's nothing mm -hmm. new under the sun. No, and, and we can mm -hmm. learn so much yes. from our mentors and those that, um, you know, have been in positions and have been in, in leadership um, roles. Uh, we can gain so much from them. Mm -hmm. And um, that listening uh, is so key. Mm -hmm. if, if sometimes we'll be quick to act, but mm -hmm. if we step back and um, listen um, and get some instruction, then our um, work could be so much more effective mm -hmm. and um, the whole goal of not um, 
hitting the same obstacles. We don't want to. Mm -hmm. We don't run into the right. same. Want, want to run into the same problems um, that some that have experienced it before. Mm -hmm. If they could give us um, advice and and counsel. Um, then we could be uh, more successful, and that that is something I think we need both in. We need the the um, the mentees to be um, moving forward and learning and, and leading, um, and we need the mentors to to help uh, guide us on that in that role. That is so Absolutely true. Absolutely right. Well, I have a question about um, what how how have you overcome your weaknesses? <laughs> you know, as a leader, because I mean, I know we I know we all know about our strengths. But how do you overcome your weaknesses? Because I know that community members and the students will want to know that because they're all concerned about that. Because again, this is about self-discovery. Right. You know, for me, it took me to step back and just sit down for uh, at least six months to really, oh, wow. yeah, six months. It took me with praying, praying and everything to, uh, to ask, well, I I is this what I'm supposed to do? Because when you get criticized and you get that X on your back and people are labeling you and you, you're like, I don't see myself this way, but am I this way? So I, it took me uh, at least six months of just sitting down, doing nothing and praying and say, God, is this what I'm supposed to do? Uh, you know, I'm tired of people attacking. And for me, that was my weak spot. I didn't want people to be mad at me. Yeah. based on what I was trying to do. And so, you know, I've had to learn that I have a saying now, delete the details, travel light, and uh, just move on. Keep it moving. Because no matter what you do, you're gonna, you, you dang, damn if you do, damn if you don't. So you just gotta keep it moving. Do what you know uh, is right. Pray about it, first off, you gotta pray about it. And just, you know, do what, what what's what makes you feel that you are contributing to what uh, is going on. But as a side. leader, if you don't do anything, you're never going to get criticized. Mm -hmm. Is how I feel mm -hmm. because if you make a change as a leader, you're going to be criticized. But it hurts. It does. It does. It it, it does hurt when you contributing your time. You're not getting paid for it. Uh, uh, you have a family you have that you're sometimes neglecting because someone told me a long time ago when you are out there the community owns you they think they own you and so it's hard you know when somebody calls you and you you can't step back you you know you taking it on but then when you take it on you're criticized for it so it, it hurts you, yeah. you know, we all human, we have feelings. That's so yeah. true. And so, you know, I, everybody, you know, people think that I'm a, oh, Mary, you strong, you know. No, mm -hmm. I have feelings too. Mm -hmm. And it hurts when somebody attacks you and say that, you know, what you're doing is not worthy. So it took me to sit down, pray about it, and, um, and then just keep it moving. That's very good. Uh, I've discovered that, um, one of my weaknesses is not being able to use the word no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm passionate about so many things and um, I put my all into, you know, everything that if, if I say yes to it, then, I, you know, I really want to, um, to give you everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I've realized that I'm one person and there's no possible way that I can uh, do everything. So um, I have been learning the art of no, um, but then finding um, ways to accomplish more by f focusing um, my efforts, um, you know, more strategically. So, you know, um, you know, does it fit within, does it fit within, you know, my life's mission mm. or the mission of the organization so that I can actually be more effective mm -hmm. in, um, you know, helping the community be greater. That's the, that, that's the ultimate goal, is you want to see your community thrive and you want to see your community grow and you want to see um, a lot of the challenges um, be erased. So how do you become more effective in, in the work that you're doing and not, you know, jumping over here and mm -hmm. jumping over there, mm -hmm. even though they're all worthy causes, how do you do it in a way uh, that um, you're more most effective? And so I've been working on saying no 
and focusing my efforts. So, uh, and and <laughs> uh, and also knowing that this is a, a this is a lifetime journey, mm -hmm. and you're going to um, continue to discover more weaknesses, or you're going to be faced with some of the same challenges over and over again until you actually. Um, beat that thing. <laughs> That's very good. Mm -hmm. That's very good advice. I have um, often recommended to my students to create a vision board mm -hmm. and the, the thing that you're describing is to really eliminate things that don't fit within your life's vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Ms. Rupp, would you like to comment on? On my greatest weakness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or how to overcome it. One, one mm. of my greatest weaknesses is that I am impatient. Uh oh. And yeah. um, and I have a sharp tongue. No. And it <laughs> is, um, you know, and it's kind of a fatal combination, those two things. Um, and I have, I have worked to be more patient, and I have really worked on, you know, managing my mouth. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it still just opens up sometimes. Um, I, I get, especially when, when I'm working with a group, I get frustrated where if we're there to do something, mm -hmm. it's really frustrating when people can't stick to the topic. Or mm -hmm. there's something else that's on their mind that's so important to them that they just have to focus on that and they can't get the focus back to where what everybody else is there to do. That is really frustrating to me. And there are and I've learned to do some simple things about that. You know, if I have, to, if I, I have a notepad with me and I write things down. Good. Or if it's, a, if it's a big group, then we have easels. And one of the easels is for what they call the parking lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that all the things you're talking about that are on the topic are on this easel. And all the things that are important but you need to get to them another day go on the parking lot easel. And then that makes it better. That helps me manage... Um, my annoyance. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. And and you know when I'm annoyed, everybody knows it, mm -hmm. and then the conversation stops. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I have to stop that. I cannot mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. if we're going to make progress. I have to manage my face and manage my tone of voice and keep listening, so that people have a chance to talk. Because if you have to go forward together, you you. Ha People have to be heard. Right. Well, I think this That's is the true. part of knowing yourself mm -hmm. as a leader so that you can lead more effectively. Now, in our closing um, remarks, I would like you to give advice about, you know, what would you like to take forward for um, the community people? What advice would you give them as they are going into the future? I mean, what, what would be those kernels of wisdom that you would like to tell people to, to do? Um, as they go forward to, as they lead organizations or community organizations? Well, Teresa hit it right on the head when she said that she's impatient and she's, uh, she's learning how to deal with it. And that's, I've had to do the same thing. So to be more patient with people, to listen uh, to others, uh, to be more diplomatic in how you treat people because words hurt, you can't take those words back. Uh, and uh, to, to, to learn to uh, do capacity building also with others. So I would say um, learn how to, to do all those things and also give back to the community for which you're serving or living in. Very good, very good. Um, I, I want to just take it back to just the, the whole journey to self-discovery yes. and, and, and um, knowing who you are and how that um, is so effective in leading others. So I, um, it was um, my self-discovery journey began um, in college when I was a student at Clark Atlanta University and that HBCU challenged us as students to um, really look within ourselves to find that greatness and um, the model of this school was find a way or make a way. Well, I just want to thank these amazing, awesome women who are leading such wonderful organizations. This has been a, an outstanding panel on leadership and discovery, and I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Uh, this is true empowerment for our community. Thank you for joining us.